This is my approach to health, finances, my business, be in charge. If you are not making decisions for you, then other people will make them for you. You can't think your way through any of this. You can only act your way through it. Welcome to the Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast. Join host Marco Torres, co-founder of MarketingBoost.com, along with expert guests as they deliver incredible proven solutions to your marketing challenges in each power-packed episode. Captain Marco has guided thousands of entrepreneurs, growing their sales and marketing through the use of value-add incentives. His Facebook groups are home to more than 84,000 entrepreneurs who are raking in sales with his advice. Get ready to be blown away with game-changing lessons for your business. Welcome to another episode of the Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast. Today, I'm excited to bring you another expert in digital marketing and a whole lot more, Miss Erin Marcus. Erin is the founder and CEO of ConquerYourBusiness.com. She's helped entrepreneurs and small business owners get the financial and emotional freedom they need to build a business and a lifestyle that they can be proud of by learning how to be in charge, take action, and get results. She's been mentoring and training, teaching, coaching for more than 20 years. She loves helping take action, helping people take action that they didn't even think possible, do things they didn't think they could do, and succeed beyond what they dared to dream. Hello and welcome, Erin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I sound very fancy when you put it all like that, don't I? <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> well, that's the idea here, right? Make you, you know, help you become the, or, or promote you as the authority, which you are. And, uh, you know, get let people set the stage for your expertise. So I've been reading all about you, listening to some of your podcasts. And one of the things I wanted to first touch on is with all of your, you know, successes throughout the years, apparently 2018 was one of your years of, I guess you called it uh, your year of failure and called yourself the number one pinball and barely making $10,000 in 2018. So I guess that was a dip in your life. It was a slight dip. <laughs> and uh, which I've, I've, I've been through as well many times over. I had to reinvent myself over my uh, career. But tell us about uh, a little bit about that, because that's something many of us can probably relate to is having to reinvent yourself you know, stepping from the corporate world, maybe to the, I'm just assuming here, you that's probably when you were stepping from the corporate world. There was and, an intermediary step there, but yes, absolutely. And, and you know, and I think um, somebody in the mindset space was kind enough to reframe Aaron's year of failure. And she liked to uh, say it was Aaron's year of reflection. It didn't feel like reflection that year. I can tell you, you know, hindsight maybe didn't feel like reflection then, but um you know, I come out of corporate, I had a C-suite level job, multiple six figures, expense account travel, all the things, very involved in the types of activities I know that your company provides your clients. And my step into the entrepreneurial world was actually into a franchise. And so I got my franchise office into the top 10 out of 200 offices in about 18 months. So, you know, yay, Aaron, still going strong, accolades, bonuses, the whole nine yards. And then I decided to switch gears. I decided to switch gears and truly go out on my own doing what is would ultimately become Conquer Your Business. But I had no idea how I wanted to do it. I have a tendency, like I knew I had to be done with the franchise in order to do the new thing. I had to make a clean break because the universe was not allowing me to keep one foot in both places. It just, I had tried that and it wasn't working. So in 2018, as I set out on my own to do my own thing, like I said, I made, I think I made $11,000. So to go from big fancy corporate income to top 10 franchisor to $11,000, that was a little brutal. That was a little brutal. So the the nice mindset people can call it my year of reflection. <laughs> if I'm over it enough to, to call but, it that. But the, the, the beauty in that, the power in that is, you know, it's, it's, and for everybody listening, there's, you know, if you're there, if you're having, or you've been through that tough time, you can, you can come out of it. 
I mean, I'll uh, give you my my quick story. 2008 was mine, 10 years before yours. And uh, I had the big corporate job. I had, um, plus I had my own businesses on the side with my wife. And I thought, you know, I diversified income because I had the, my wife you know, and I had a bus multiple businesses. Plus I had a corporate job, which was an amazing uh, uh, deal. And all of a sudden it all disappeared. And mm -hmm. I called 2008, 2009, my, uh, you know, I had incredible sales year. I like to joke about, I mean, I sold my house, I sold my cars, oh, I sold God. my boats, <laughs> I sold my motorcycle, I sold yeah. my furniture. I mean, it got bad, really bad. And in my mid forties, I'm having to reinvent myself completely start, you know, all the businesses that I had, the multiple businesses I had failed, the, the corporate job failed. I was I figured, me? You kidding me? I will bounce. I will end up, you know, laterally finding another high-level position, and I was basically forced to go, you know, uh, entrepreneur 100% because I'm like, I'm no one's going to pay me what I think I'm worth anymore after 2008, 2009, and so it was like you, you know, running down to zero and negative for a long mm -hmm. time before I made eleven thousand. So. <laughs> Well, I say, you know, $11,000 revenue is negative in terms of, you know, the year, like no, but you don't live on $11,000. Right? Absolutely. Not, yeah, it's right? technically yeah. a negative here. Absolutely. And I think um, it, it was interesting because the thing that I learned in that process that's changed things going forward is it was what I didn't expect. I'll put it that way. What I didn't expect was the change was really more about who I was being and what I was believing and not what I was doing. Like the, what you need to do is very figure outable, but the mindset, the resilience, the persistence, all of the thoughts that have to happen behind the, what you are doing is really what makes such a big difference because and for me, I think one of the reasons it was hard is I love the puzzle of business. I love the puzzle of marketing. I love the puzzle of business. I love, I understand that none of this is stationary. As soon as you think you figured it out, it moves. And I like, right, that the market moves, the economy moves, you, right, we change as people, our clients change. None of this stuff is static. So I always kind of went into it knowing that, and I love figuring it out. But, and you even see that right now, like in the last year, business has gotten a little bit harder to do than it was in the few years leading up to it. And the people who are having the biggest problems are the people who haven't learned how to stay in that flow state of tweaking and adjusting and tracking and tweaking and adjusting and tracking. But I didn't expect, and I think in 2018, when I really had to come out with like put my own flag in the ground. I'm not representing a corporate name. I'm not representing a franchise. I have to make up the entire thing from the ground up. I didn't expect the mindset to be as hard as it was. Yeah, it sure can be. Um, and then, you know, I'll, I don't, if you're out there listening, one of the things that I know held me back is victimhood. I, in my mid forties here, Again, found myself scraping the bottom of the barrel, essentially, and uh, uh, you know, really began to feel like, why, why me, you know, and even began to feel, even began to try to blame it on, you know, my dad used to feel because my last name we're Latinos, you know, Mexican Americans. He felt the corporate world had held him back for you know racism, so now I'm I'm choosing to feel you know. Uh, that maybe it's because of that that I was selected to be, you know, you know, knocked off of my perch of the v vice president of the big of the company and yada yada. And why I couldn't find myself back in. So I'm beginning to feel like a, you know, choosing to select victimhood, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, it until I change that mindset and realize, you know what, I live in the United States of America. I speak multiple languages. Heck, I'm good looking. Ha ha ha. <laughs> I'm smart. I can do this. <laughs> I'm smart and I can I can figure this out. And I yeah. know how to make money. I know how to get back on my feet. Uh, and getting the mindset, get back on the, you know, reading the books, getting the training. And oh. it doesn't happen alone. Getting the, you know, finding people, oh, your sure. mentors to follow and get it done because everybody can do it if you just get yourself out of the way and so forth would you not agree absolutely and what i've 
real the way that I describe it is it's not what you're doing that will necessarily mess you up. It was it's the intentions underneath. And the two intentions that I see mess us up all the time are when we are being driven by insecurity or by desperation. Because you will make every wrong decision you can find if you're coming from a place of either insecurity or desperation. You know, in, in, in small business, in marketing and in sales, when you're coming from a place of desperation, you make it about what you want to have happen and the money you need to make instead of making it about serving and helping the clients. When you're insecure, you try to, well, you'll undervalue yourself extensively. You'll hesitate. Interestingly enough, most of the people I see being held back, and I'm going to just, you know, let's assume a baseline of they're good at what they do. They take action. They work hard. You know, if you, if you have the basics down, most of us are held back because we're playing too small. That's true. The, one of the biggest things is you think small, you stay small. Yeah. So switching over from mindset to tactical yeah. a little bit, uh, I find, and I see one of your uh, on your website and you talk about uh, are you guilty of random acts of marketing and I know I've been there where you're just you know chasing shiny objects and uh, trying to uh, well you know follow what everybody's all the different gurus that are saying do this do that so uh, talk to us about how random acts of marketing are destroying your potential results destroying you, your business you know, yeah well, and it's twofold, actually. One version is exactly what you're talking about. The random acts of marketing, when you are susceptible to the influence of experts. And here's the thing. They're not really doing anything wrong by promising their tactic will make a difference for you. They are not doing anything wrong. That's their job. They're doing their job. They're doing their marketing. Becoming susceptible to following the wrong guru expert subject matter expert has more to do with the fact that you haven't taken the time to reverse engineer your business strategy because all of those tactics work they all work but they might not be the right tactic for your business and if you are not reverse engineering and just taking whatever action you think in the in that particular day looks good you're going to end up much more likely picking the wrong path. And the second version of the random acts of marketing I see are the people who are inconsistent, right? We can mm -hmm. be random in the fact that we're inconsistent. And the bottom line is that businesses exist to solve problems. Your business exists to solve problems. And the only way to make money is for clients to become aware of the problem that you solve. And the only way for people to come aware of the problem that you solve is through marketing. And so when you are only sometimes doing marketing half well, a little well, not well at all, you're only half the time going to get any results. It has to be, I call marketing the absolute low hum that has to be happening underneath your business at all times. Right. So you've got to, in other words, have that, uh, the way I'm reading that is you've got to have your core processes in place, your core systems in place, and then some of those different tactics to bring people into the top of the sales funnel, into the top of the website or into the top of your lead flow can all, you know, might be good ideas to try and test. But if you don't have that consistent system at the bottom of the funnel that takes that lead or through the funnel process, through your lead flow process that takes them through the, you know, nurturing uh, and uh, slow, you know, nurturing and conversion process, then you're just, you know, shooting in the wind. Um, and so to, the, the word that you're using over and over and over again that I absolutely love is processes. And most small business owners go into business to do the thing the business does. Right? They go into business because they like doing the service the business provides. And the last process they'll put into place is client acquisition. Because I work with clients who are making a, who have million dollar businesses and no client acquisition system hmm. because they've got a good name out there. 
So they're getting some referrals, but they also realize you can't truly, truly scale without a client acquisition system. And the other thing is you truly can't become a leader of your business. You will never get out of getting being stuck working in your business instead of on your business if you don't have a client acquisition system on the front end of your business. How true is that? All right, folks, we'll be right back. We're going to hear from our sponsor, and we'll be right back. Hold tight. It's time to wow, surprise, and impress your clients with the most powerful customer draw card available anywhere. The Marketing Boost Solution Show is brought to you by Marketing Boost, where you can get valuable travel and restaurant incentives to drive your leads from prospects to paying customers. Now you can offer complimentary hotel stays in over 130 destinations worldwide. Go to marketingboostsolutions.com and try it for free right now. Welcome back to the Marketing Boost Solutions podcast. We're here talking about marketing, marketing strategy, mindset with Aaron Marcus, an expert in coaching and developing business owners to multi-million dollar companies. So Aaron, we're talking about, uh, you know, building the next thing on our subject probably should be team building. I don't know about you, but one of the things I always recommend to my community is Stop going at it alone. I have found so many entrepreneurs that uh, in the startup phase, which can be years, especially when they think small, they stay small. Uh, they are trying to do everything themselves. They're trying to build their website. They're trying to build their, you know, create their strategy. They're trying to, you know, launch marketing ideas. They're trying to do the sales rep themselves. And, you know, don't even don't even use the ability, you know, the simplest of all outsourcing today, Fiverr and other services like that, where you can start building a team that you can count on to outsource things to. What do you say to that? A hundred million percent accurate. And it's, I think this is one of the places where my corporate experience served me well, because if I would have walked into the marketing department at my corporate job and started messing with the servers and messing with the website, I would have been chased out, you know, with pitchforks and torches. So why, why would I think now would be a great time for me to learn how to do that, right? And I love how you said, you know, the way that you phrased, you can't go it alone a hundred percent. But the other, the way that I look at this is why would I spend a very long time to do a very bad job at something that somebody else can spend a very short time at to do a really good job at doing. And it, it right. And it comes up in, a, in so many different ways. What I have learned is the, the correlation between your ability to work in a narrow, narrow, narrow genius zone, it correlates completely to how fast you can scale your business. The smaller your genius zone is and the more you can play at what you are absolutely phenomenal at doing and have the support around you who is absolutely phenomenal at what they're doing, that's We'll tell that's, you exactly that's when, that's when how you fast begin you're to grow. grow. Absolutely. That's it, it. There's like nothing else that I have found that's such a one to one correlation. And what we find, or what I find, and even in my own, you know, experience early on, is you have this busy busyness thing. You feel good about your day as a business owner. Well, I, you know, I work hard. I work hard, hard, hard. I work 12 hours a day, 16 hours a day. I'm proud of the fact that I'm a workaholic, you know, and, and you just want to, you know, you do all this stuff and you're doing data entry and you're doing a bunch of emails and you're checking your Facebook po posts and you're just doing all this stuff. And then before you know it, the day is over. And what did you really accomplish that generated new revenue? What did you accomplish that actually brought in new clients or new, you know, new, new leads and so forth. And uh, I always say that, you know, to my community is anything you do over and over, anything you do every day over and over, that should be set up as a business process that you should be outsourcing. And in today's world, it's never been easier to outsource all kinds of steps that you might be doing, whether it be people in your backyard, you know, home-based agents in the U.S. or somewhere else in the world that are uh, helping you do, I mean, in my case, I've got about 80 people around the world that are 
that we've you know that are in most of them are either outsourced to out third party entire third party companies or individuals and uh, i used to have a big 10,000 square foot office in miami and now it's almost all outsourced to community you know to staff elsewhere but when we started it was you know one on one and uh, or you know myself doing a lot of it and realized i can't do this i need to outsource <laughs> <laughs> right. And it, right. Well, the other thing is, I think people get into the there, there's a couple of different traps that prevent people from doing this. Number one, they think it's going to cost them money and they think they don't have any money to do it. And we have to remember, this is not an all or nothing problem. Humans, our brains tend to be very all or nothing. If I can't hire a full time employee, then I do nothing. And that's not how this works. You can start people at five hours a week and let that become 10 hours a week, right? So it's not all or nothing. You can start small. And the other thing is we overcomplicate what we're doing. We massively overcomplicate. Business is rather simple. I'm not gonna say it's easy, but it is rather simple. When we complicate it to create, ta using tactics that, are not the right time for our business, then we find ourselves buried in the busy work trying to make something function that we don't know how to do. And I always go back to what is your fastest path to cash? What is your fastest path to cash? What marketing strategy? I always start with active strategies over passive strategies, meaning I have influence over them as opposed to, you know, sitting back and hoping people see them and take action. And I'm also looking for short-term ROI over long-term ROI. And if you just start with active short-term strategies that will get you the money you need, to invest in the team that can then help you with the long-term passive strategies. And it goes back to what we were chatting about with the random acts of marketing. This is why it's so important to reverse engineer your overall business strategy, your scaling strategy, so that you can put your ducks in the right row. Hmm. Now you've got a, I'm not sure this is going to publish before, but I think maybe I'll move it up the calendar to publish before your big event, Lead Generation A. Uh, tell us about that coming up September 14th. Yes, thank you, thank you. And it, and here's the thing, if people are listening to this after that, we're going to do it again. I've already got it on the calendar for um, some time in the first quarter because people are already asking me, oh my God, when are you going to do it again? So we're going to do a lead generation masterclass because what I see happening out there is an understanding of what marketing is, right? We kind of said that marketing is anything that you are doing that creates awareness that your business exists. Wonderful. And we understand what sales are. Sales are the mutually agreed upon conversations that we have when we are talking about exchanging money for services. That means both parties have agreed that they're having a conversation about exchanging money for services. but that leads us a gap in the middle. If you Venn diagram those two things, right? If you, it's my fancy word for today, Venn diagram. If you Venn diagram marketing and sales, the overlap you get is intentional lead generation. What can you be doing to influence and assist people from just absorbing or observing your marketing and being interested then in having that sales conversation with you. So we're going to do a masterclass on intentional lead generation for service professionals and um, September 14th. And I'm really excited about this one. Let me uh, see if I pull that up. That's going to be on conqueryourbusiness.com. Is that where we can sign yes. up for that? Yes. If you so go to conqueryourbusiness.com, um, you'll get a uh, the pop-up will come up there. And we're also going to add a resources page so that people can get on the wait list for future events as well. Very but everything cool. to find us is always on conqueryourbusiness.com. We want to make it one place for everyone to go to get a hold of us. If you're on YouTube, you're seeing where to uh, reach or find uh, this entire uh, cor uh, mastermind course coming up, conqueryourbusiness.com. Yes. If you don't make it by September 14th, I'm not sure when this will actually be published then there'll be a future one coming. 
then there's a reach out and uh, say hello to Erin on LinkedIn. Yes. Search her, Erin Marcus, on LinkedIn.com here and follow her here as well. She's also got a YouTube channel here with 323 videos of uh, amazing content here, guys. She also has her own podcast show, so you'll want to subscribe to that. Uh, or you can find her on Facebook. I think we had her page up here earlier. Lead Gen Masterclass coming up on her Facebook. Search for Erin Aaron Marcus on Facebook. Um, we're going to come right back in a moment and talk more about amazing ideas on how to build your business after we hear from our sponsor, Automation Booster. And we'll be right back. Is your business on autopilot yet? Do you have automation in place to capture, nurture, and convert prospects into clients via email, SMS, ringless voicemails, appointment setting? Get all the inbound and outbound marketing tools in one place. Go to marketingboostsolutions.com for more on automating your business so you can make money while you sleep. Welcome back to the Marketing Boost Solutions podcast. We're here talking about marketing strategies, mindset, how to be, how to take your business to another level and how to generate leads the right way that put them into your funnel with the expert, Aaron Marcus. Um, Aaron, by the way, you just heard from Mark, uh, Automation Booster and I want to do another plug on that, guys. One of the things you need in business today is a proper CRM. When you've got these, when you have these leads coming into your system, what are you using to set up automation, to nurture these leads, to follow up with text message, ringless voicemail broadcasting, email, of course, and offer, you know, and make your products and automate these things so that your, your business begins to work for you and you're making money while you sleep. Now, there's plenty of uh, software out there and all kinds of tools. It's never been more affordable to build a business today as far as the technology and the tools that are out there. But I've never seen one that does as complete as Automation Booster for the price. So go check that out. Back to Aaron. Aaron, we were talking about uh, your lead generation uh, uh, mastermind coming up here soon. And um, let's also bring it back to um, uh, what do you mean by creating uh, systems and processes in your business? How do you coach pe people on that? This was... This was interesting for me because, in fact, I did a live show a few weeks ago and I titled it The Love Letter I Never Thought I'd Write. Somewhere in it was to processes and systems. Somewhere in my brain a long time ago, I somehow crossed the idea that abiding by a process and a system was the same thing as following rules. And I am not really good at following rules. I've long felt the rules didn't apply to me. I'm willing to do the work to, to forge my own path, but I'm not a big rule follower. And for the longest time, I really thought, and I'm not the only one who have said this, that processes were going to limit my creativity. They were going to make me not uh, allow me to be as... Um, just free to do whatever I wanted to do when I wanted to do it, right? And nothing could be further from the truth because the only way to be able to handle more and more and more clients and more and more and more marketing and more and more and more strategies is to have the automation and processes and team underneath it to make it all possible, to make it all possible. And you had mentioned this, if you're doing something, the same thing every day, it needs to be a process. It's so, so true. The more you can create processes around what you're doing, not only does it make your life easier, but it makes things trackable and measurable, and you're going to find problems faster. You can predict problems faster when you have the measuring, when you're tracking how your processes work and what the numbers are, you will notice fluctuations earlier in the game and you can end up with leading indicators instead of lagging indicators of the problem. One of my favorite TV shows that I uh, watch used to watch a lot was The Prophet with Marcus Lemonis. And, you know, he was always talking about 
people, process, and uh, profit. But yeah. in other words, it was all about the, the people and the process. But it's even more important, as you said at the beginning of the show, is the process. Because the people, you know, you can invent, you can replace, you know, hire quick, uh, rather uh, hire slow, fire quick when they're not performing. But the process that you've implemented that you expect your staff to take action with is what will begin to make the difference if are you consistent with your lead flow and acquisition. You know, one of the things you talk about is con conversations about cash as well, or conversations about, uh, how do you refer to it? Conversations about um, sales or what have you. Tell me, what, 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 do you, what do you mean by, you know, the, the right type of conversations? Sure. The sales conversations, the way that I, when I do sales training, I call it, put the conversation in your sales conversations. And what that's really about is it, is it really, it comes down to this. Your business is not about you. Your business is not about you. Your business is about the client and the problem they have that you can solve. And so a sales conversation is the same thing. It's not about your intention, your pitch, what you want to see happen. If you can instead have an actual conversation with somebody that talks about what it is that they want, what problems that they're facing, what concerns that they have, what desires that they have, and then determine if you can or cannot help them solve that problem, your sales conversations, not only are they going to be in, of service in and of themselves, but you're going to have a much, much easier time closing relationship-based clients and much higher closing rates. And the other thing is you can take all of that and put it in your marketing. You don't have to wait until you're in a sales conversation to start talking about why someone may or may not choose to work with you. One of the phrases that I use a lot is don't ignore the elephant in the room, ride the elephant. <laughs> and so many salespeople are worried about the point in the conversation where we're going to have to overcome objections. I don't even use that phrase because if you're going to think about overcoming objections, now I'm of the mindset that I'm trying to win, which means you have to lose. And that's not what we're trying to do. If instead all I'm doing is responding to your responses, I'm continuing to have a conversation, which for me, sales is an invitation to move forward. I don't make an offer to everybody I talk to. And what I have found that I do all the time is I will go right on social media. If somebody has a quote unquote objection or a response to me during a sales conversation that I think is a really, really great point, Instead of being worried that I didn't overcome it in my pitch, I'll go put it right out on Facebook, right out on LinkedIn and say, somebody asked me a great question yesterday in a sales conversation. This is what they asked me. And then I'll be able to speak to it. Because I'm not trying to manipulate anybody in a sales conversation. I'm not trying to convince anybody in a sales conversation. I'm just talking to people. And they're just talking to me. And the more, especially when you're talking about high ticket, a lot of the people that I work with in particular, they're frustrated. They're smart. They work hard. They're driven. And they're like, what the bleepity bleep is going on here? Why isn't it working? So we're having some emotional conversations. Why would I take a emotional sharing of their fears and their dreams and turn it into me trying to get something from them. Hmm. And I loved that line of yours, invitation to move forward versus, you know, closing the sale or. Yeah. You can't or, convince or, anybody. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. The reason I like this approach is not only is it just better for the sales receiver, if you would, but it takes all the pressure off of me. It takes all the pressure off of me if I don't worry about, I have to come up with a perfect thing to say to somebody to convince them to say yes to me. Because I will tell you, there is no perfect thing to say to somebody to convince them to buy something from you that they don't want or don't need. 
Mm. That's not what we're doing, right? So if all I'm doing instead is having a conversation, a mutually beneficial conversation, and if I approach this through asking very good thought out questions to determine if I am the right person for them, or if I'm not who is, because I have a huge network of people that I refer business to. That's such a relief because I'm not in my head, right? If I, if the, if your business is not about you, if your business is about your prospect and your client and the problem that they have, well, then this way, the sales conversation is also about them. Love it. In your uh, programs, you refer to your uh, top line approach, uh, be in charge, take action, get results. Tell us more about how you do that for your clients and how do you motivate people to do just that? Be in charge, take action, get results. This is really, this is kind of my point of view about everything. This is, this is my approach to health, finances, relationships, my business, be in charge. And that, and for me, that means it's my way of saying personal responsibility, because one of the things I've learned along the way is, and this is from childhood as well. If you are not going back to actually what you had shared about feeling victimy, right? If you don't make the decisions for you, then you are effectively giving that power over you away to other people who then get to make those decisions for you. And it doesn't make them wrong or bad inherently. It could be doctors, it could be lawyers, it could be the law, it could be a, a corporate CEO. But if you are not making decisions for you, then other people will make them for you. And so the idea is be in charge, not be in charge of everybody else. They got to make their own decisions and decide what they want to do for them. But what do I want? What is it that I want in my life for my health, my relationships, my money, my business, et cetera, et cetera. And then the next, once I figure that out, most people don't ever do that. They have no idea what they want. They haven't reverse engineered everything. They have no idea what they want. They're just out there doing random acts of life. And then the second step is take action. So the first thing we do is figure it out. What do you want? And what do I have to do? And who do I have to be? And what do I have to believe in order to create that? And then the second step is take action. What am I going to do? You can't think your way through any of this. You can only act your way through it. I can't think about how I would like to lose 15 pounds. I think about it a lot, actually. It doesn't matter. Right? <laughs> it really doesn't matter. I can only act my way to the solution, though, right? So we be in charge. We, we take responsibility and we make decisions. And then we take action. And then the third step is get results. And that doesn't mean get what you want. It's not what I said. It's get results. Something will happen. My job then is to look at what happened and use that information to go back to the beginning and make a better decision or make the next decision. So it's a cycle. I can see why you are a popular business <laughs> coach, so to speak. Um, I can see how you would be certainly guiding and mentoring your clients along the way. Let me go back to sharing my screen and um, showing people where people can find you. Give me just a moment. Are we seeing my screen? We are. Very well, folks. Again, find more about Aaron at conqueryourbusiness.com, conqueryourbusiness.com, or look for her on LinkedIn at Aaron Marcus, lead gen masterclass coming up September 14th and beyond. She'll have a waiting list for that. Don't forget to look for her YouTube channel, Conquer Your Business, with 323 free videos that you can start getting some of this amazing uh, mentorship without, without, you know, for free. And by, for by free. Way, and Absolutely. Obviously, obviously, you can come back and, and get the, more from her as well by, you know, signing up, contacting her and finding out more about her different book of discovery call and find out how she can help you get your North Star figured out, figure out what it is that you, you know, she'll help you figure out what it is you want, help you get those results 
in a very quick time, you know, time frame versus what you might be doing on your own. And, you know, a lot of people have always find in, in my experience that hiring a business coach or uh, they don't see the, you know, that they need it. Uh, I've been one myself that hasn't always done that, but you know, I you look at people like uh, uh, what is the name of Brady, the uh, football. I mean, the uh, um, they all have huge tons coaches, of coaches, tons of coaches. I think, I think he I, has like fourteen different coaches right. combined between his, what he does on the football field, what he does for you know, as in, in his financial life, what he does in his here, there, and everywhere, and led him to be you know the goat, the most amazing football yeah. player ever. So having men, I'm a Bears fan. I don't know if I'm allowed to agree with that, but that's <laughs> let, but I get it. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> well, it's the idea. I'm sure that, uh, yeah, he's not the only one with a bunch of coaches. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very true. And you know, and I think I often wonder because I jumped right into having coaches. I never, I've never not had coaches. And I think it's because in my corporate experience, in two different very large businesses, I had amazing, amazing, amazing mentors. And so when I was out on my own, I just looked to replace that mentorship that I had and that made such a difference in my career and in my life, in my corporate experience. And I did have, um, you know, like this, I did have a woman once say to me, well, I'm also a business coach, so I don't want to hire a coach because I don't want anyone to tell me what to do. And I thought, I, was, I hesitated, I thought about it for a second. I went, really? All I want is someone to tell me what to do. <laughs> like, just tell, you have what I want. Just tell me what to do. <laughs> Isn't that all I want? Just give me the path. Give, give me the, me the path. path. You know, yeah. we, we're all too close to our own stories. We don't see our blind spots. We work so hard in what we're doing. And on and on top of it, you go into business to do that because you're good at what the business does, right? And being the best photographer in the world, the dentist, the lawyer, the CPA, you name it, has nothing to do with growing a business. So why would you think you could be as good as a business owner as you are as an expert without putting any of the money, the energy, the effort into doing it. I loved one of the comments I heard from you on one of your other podcasts that I was listening to, where uh, you talk about the entrepreneur is take, you know, taking one step at a time, which makes sense, right? We take one step at a time, we're moving forward, but we're likely looking down at our feet as we take each step forward. And we're not necessarily seeing the bigger picture that your business coach might see and has already been down that same path. So he's, you know, if you're just taking the next step, you could be wandering all over the place if you're looking down at your feet while you move forward one step at a time and you're think, feeling good about it. I'm taking one step at a time. I will reach my goals. <laughs> <laughs> but you may even be going not only might you be wiggling around you might be going in circles so the uh that's where a coach can be like hey you know you need to here's the line yeah. <laughs> here's a line right all i yeah. want is for someone to take my squirrels that are at a rave and put them ducks in a row right that's all we want exactly. cool well folks thanks again for listening if you like the content we brought you today please like subscribe and share this with somebody else we'd really appreciate it if you'd share it like and subscribe and uh look forward to you know go and follow aaron and follow her youtube channel etc we'll reach out to her on her website one last time what was the name of your website folks i'll let you give the final call on all of that aaron where can you people can find, find you? everything you need at conqueryourbusiness.com thank you aaron you've been an amazing guest today for our audience and uh, again, like, subscribe, and share. And thank you for your uh, your thank you for your attention, folks. We really appreciate you being with us. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to another episode of Marketing Booth Solutions podcast with your hosts, Captain Marco Torres. Now it's on you. Take the next step now. Go to marketingboothsolutions.com for more on how you can wow, delight, and surprise your clients with the most amazing draw card on the planet. So stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty for knowledge. See you next time.